Namo Buddhaya, dear Dhamma family, welcome to another session of Dhamma Expresso. From this little book, Buddha's Wisdom, I will read to you a very beautiful teaching. Out of these powers, the noble power of wisdom is the best. Supported by wisdom's power, the wise one will find true welfare. When true welfare discriminates, when true wisdom discriminates, wisdom, fame and renown increase. That person endowed with wisdom, even in suffering, finds happiness. Dear Dhamma family, this is a very important line. Out of whatever powers you may acquire, the noble power of wisdom is the best. And when you are supported by wisdom's power, the wise one will find true welfare, genuine welfare. When you have true wisdom, wisdom, fame and renown increase. And you, be en you who are endowed with wisdom, even in suffering finds happiness. Can we avoid aging, sickness, death? Can we avoid dissociation with ones that we love, association with ones that we do not like, not getting what we want? Can any one of us avoid all these things? These are the common denominators of life. It is inevitable. But the Buddha said, with wisdom, even in such situations, even I mean, um, amidst all this dukkha, you will find happiness because you know how to handle, how to deal with these situations. Remember, when you take refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, you take refuge in wisdom. Not in power, not in promises, not in myths, not in prayer, but in Wisdom. Happiness even in suffering is because you know how to deal with these situations. The Chinese word for Dhamma, Fa, if you know, is a compound of two words. On the left side is three drops, water. And on the right side is the word to go out, Chu, Chu Chi, the Chu. When you have fa, when you have the Dhamma, you flow like water around rocks, like water around obstacles in the path of least resistance. Dhamma teaches us, Dhamma gives us that wisdom to see and to accept reality and how to deal with this Dukkha that is in the first noble truth. That is the common denominator of us all. Dhamma teaches us how to accept all these dukkha and handle it, converting it to sukha. There is a wonderful Chan story. Bring me the rhinoceros. I find this story so enlightening. The story tells of a master on a very hot, stuffy, humid summer day, asking for a fan. He was given a fan by a local celebrity, a fan made from the horn of a rhinoceros. Now the rhinoceros is not an animal found in China, so surely it's a very exotic gift, a fan made from the horn of rhinoceros. So he told his student, please go to the room and take out this fan. The student went to the room and to the horror found that this fan was crushed by books that had been placed on top of it, crushed to pieces. So the student hurried back and reported to the master, I'm so sorry, master, but the fan is broken. 
The master, without a hesitation of a moment, replied, Well, in that case, bring me the rhinoceros. And he laughed. The students that were around him had a sudden awakening. They knew. While others, like many of us here, are perplexed as to what is the story about. What is the story all about? On a hot summer's day, humid, heavy with heat, a fan would be a wonderful thing to provide us with relief. We all want a fan. We seek a fan. And we think that our happiness will be there because of the fan. Now, that fan, unfortunately, is now smashed to pieces, broken, gone. That's reality, irretrievable. We can't change that, however much we want. And the master says, in that case, bring me the rhinoceros, he said. Is it possible to bring him a rhinoceros in China? Well, seems quite improbable. And second, even if possible, a rhinoceros would create havoc. It is not an animal that is domesticated. So what the master is saying is give me the worst. Even with the worst, I will still be happy because my happiness does not depend on the presence of a fan. If that fan is present, well and good. If that fan is absent, gone, I will still be equally happy. Bring me the rhinoceros. Even in the worst situation, I can be happy. So I hope that we all, like the other students around the Master, can equally be awakened to this profound Dhamma lesson. That is the beauty of the Buddha Dharma. Not giving you a promise, not telling you that whatever you ask will be given to you, whatever you seek will be found, whatever you knock will be open to you. No, 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 not that. Because we know that that is impossible. What the Buddha is teaching you, giving you, is the wisdom to handle all the difficulties of life so that you can be happy, so that you can have happiness and that you know how to deal with all the dukkha, dissatisfaction and stresses of life. Thank you. Thank you.